A tool. What is a tool? Is it something that makes our life easier? Is it something that we need to get through the day? Is it something to complete a task? Webster defines it as a handheld device that aids in accomplishing a task. So I guess for me, the better question is, what's the right tool for the right job? Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Outdoors. So the right tool for the job, that can kind of apply for a lot of things, but especially to backpacking. When I did a extremely cold weather trip in uh, Northern Indiana last, last year, uh, it got down to negative two degrees. And that, that was one of my coldest experiences in an overnight. I learned a lot in that situation about myself, about the environment, about just what it takes to actually set up a camp in extreme cold weather. And one of the problems I had was being able to use my fingers uh, without gloves in extreme cold weather. The gloves were a hindrance, but it was so cold, my bare hands couldn't take the weather for long. So that proposed a problem. Now, to solve that problem, I needed the right tool for the right job. I remember having a conversation with Goat after that experience uh, and talking about how I just wish I had a place to keep my hands warm and, and insulated and then be able to pull them out and use them to tie the knots I needed or to, to you know get the fire going that I needed without gloves. He had a similar thought about wanting a piece of gear that went around his fanny pack uh, that he could just put his hands in to warm up from time to time. Well, anybody that knows Goat and myself, we sometimes get in these mad scientist kicks where we'll literally talk about developing gear for hours. We've probably recreated backpacking at least three times at this point. So I went home and started working on a prototype version of this piece of gear. Uh, I ended up making it out of down and putting in the little baffles and I made one for him and I made one for backpacking with Jason right before their New Hampshire trip. When Goat and Jason got back from their New Hampshire trip with Justin from It's Good in the Woods, they said that their Polar Jammer prototype was a total game changer for their environment that they were in. It really helped them, whether it was keeping their batteries, keeping their hands, it just really helped their winter camping experience be that much more comfortable. One of the things I thought about after getting that feedback was how can I make it a little better? One, instead of using down, I probably ought to use a synthetic insulation. The Climate Shield insulation that I use in this is much more resilient to the weather. And if you think about it, when you have this on your hip belt over your fanny pack or just using it with your hands many times, your hands may get a little sweaty once they start warming up, but you also may encounter the weather, whether it be the snow or the cold rain, whatever version of cold weather you endure, the, the Climate Shield is going to hold up that much better than what down would at that particular time. Down will just crumble eventually once it gets wet. Climate Shield will stay strong. Now the game changer with the Polar Jammer is its cinch up ends. When you cinch up the ends, whether it be around your fanny pack to keep your contents in your fanny pack warm or you just cinch it up a little bit to keep it tight around your hands, it actually traps in all that heat and works that much more efficiently. And it creates a lot more uses. All the different uses that you can come up with for the Polar Jammer. One, like we said, it can go around your fanny pack as it was originally intended. Could even use it as a pillow. Cinch up one end, cinch up the other end, and it tightens up and makes a nice little fluffed up pillow. If that's not enough for you, put a couple of shirts in it. Maybe make it a little more of a fuller pillow than what you, than what you want. You could customize it however you wish. Put a couple of carabiners hang it from your ridgeline of your hammock, or sometimes you guys with your fancy ground dwelling tents that have those little hooks at the top, hang it from there. Another thing I thought of 
when you want to store your Nalgene, I know a lot of people sleep with their Nalgene water bottles. To me, that always makes me nervous. What if it opens up? What if it leaks? Then it goes from keeping your water from freezing as a convenience to a very dangerous situation. Imagine not putting your water bottle in your quilt, but maybe tucking it in here at a hand warmer, cinch it up, have it right beside you. Then if it leaks, it's only get your polar jammer wet and not your very much needed top quilt. The crazy thing also about this and one of the mad science conversations that I was having with Goat was it's not even limited to the backpacking community. What about a hunter? I couldn't imagine in that late bow season sitting in the deer stand, keeping your hands warm, then guess what? when you pull your hands out, no gloves to contend with. I'm able to use my bow with my fingertips, no issues whatsoever. Or maybe you like to ice fish. It can come in useful there. Imagine you're at a Notre Dame football game and they are smashing the University of Kentucky. I can't imagine a better time to stand up and pull my warm hands out of the polar jammer and clap and cheer with no repercussions. Works for outdoor stadiums as well. I'm curious, what are all the uses you could imagine for the Polar Jammer? Be sure to put them in the comments. Also hit up my Instagram, the link's in the description. Be sure to tag me if you are using it this winter. I'd love to see pictures of you guys actually using this out in the woods or at that Notre Dame Stadium. When I was first trying to decide whether or not to actually produce some for the backpacking community, I felt like I needed to call Goat and say, hey man. I might make some of these just to see what happens. I'm not big on production. I'd much rather create than produce. But for whatever reason, I felt like maybe this is something I could maybe make and contribute to the backpacking community for a short time. I definitely wanted to include Goat on that. I called Goat one day and I said, hey man, I may be making some of these for the backpacking community. I'd love to get you involved, make sure that it was partially your idea if I'm selling them. I want to cut you in. Goat then said, why don't you take whatever you were going to pay me and put it towards Love Like Jonathan. Way cool, Goat. Way cool. I probably I spent more time on a sewing machine this summer than on trail, but with the motivation that Goat gave me, I feel like it's a much justified cause. I'm committing to making 300 Polar Jammers, and they're already on sale on my Etsy. Again, you can find the link in the description. Of those 300, Seven dollars from each I'm donating to Love Like Jonathan where we're feeding families this Thanksgiving. We're hoping to feed a hundred families this year and this could help. What do I do after 300? I have no idea. Part of me says maybe keep making a few of them but maybe not. Maybe it's time to get back on the trail. I don't know what will happen but I'm curious of what you guys think. Not 100% sure on that right now. Like I said, I'm more into creating, not as much production, but it does kind of drive me to think about this as a fundraiser for the Love Like Jonathan. I'll also put a link, if you would like to directly donate to Love Like Jonathan, we've got a website up. Right now, we are completely nonprofit. Every penny that we make goes to helping feed families for Thanksgiving. So everything that we do, whether it's throwing up a website or shopping to get the food or delivering the food to families. Uh, everything is done on a volunteer basis. Again, thank you everyone for your support. Super excited about this project. I'll see you next time.